Hey Isaac from Poland. I am Aga, your host, and I would like to welcome you to the second episode of Leadership Stories podcast. Today, my guest is Katarzyna Kiryczuk. She was a part of national team of Isaac for Poland of 17-18 term, responsible for partnership development. Right now, she's a part of one of the biggest employer branding agencies in Poland, Absolvent. We talked about her experience in ISEC, what challenged her, what she learned from it, but also we mentioned the external relevance of ISEC right now during these challenging times that we are having. And we came up with an idea that we need to brainstorm right now all the ideas, how we can adapt our organization to the current situation and the current context. Our call to action to you is to put in the section of comments below all of your ideas that you have. In the description you can find contact for Kitty so you can approach her. She is really open to any conversation. So enjoy the next episode. Uh, welcome my guest Katarzyna Kiryczuk, also known as Kitty. <laughs> Hey guys, hey Aga, I'm super happy that I can be right now with you and that I can share my leadership story with you. So thank you Aga one more time for, for invitation, hope that we'll have fun. Well, I'm also happy that you accepted my invitation so fast. For you guys to know, Kiri is also a very active alumni of our entity because uh, last time she was on our national conference giving us the the workshop as a part of Absolvent Company, uh, our partner. So, so also Kiri may be someone that will cross your paths in ISEC soon on, on some of the conferences. The first question that I wanted to ask you is to uh, give us a bit of your perspective. So like, what was your story in ISEC? Thank you for this question. I really like it. Oh my God. I think that it will be not easy to explain my ISEC story in few words uh, because I spent in our organization over four years. And as Aga said, I'm trying to be as active alumni as I can. Uh, so I will try to be super short with my Isaac experience. I joined Isaac in March 2014. Do you remember this year? Uh, I still yes. And uh, I think that it was the most amazing decision which I could make in my students' life. As one of local uh, committee member of Isaac in Lublin, greetings and kisses for my, for my lovely Lublin. I understood that, that thanks to this organization, we can make our dreams for the world and about our world um, come true if we are working together. So at the beginning, I was OC in that time. Right now, uh, I think it's team member of local project across the skyline as uh, I was OC external relation. So it's historical uh, name of a PD area in Isaac for Poland. So I have, to tell, I have to say that I wasn't the best team member ever. I was good in sales, but I was afraid, of, afraid to be in touch with, with EPs. So it took a lot of time for me to leave my comfort zone and just enjoy time with them. So as I told you, I was good in sales. I really like it even now. So after this experience of being team member in local project, I became a coordinator. Uh, I became business development uh, manager in sales support team and I had possibility to work with LCVP PD in that time. So I think that during this experience I fall in love with, with this area. And after this I uh, got trusted to be a leader finally of marketing in career days. Uh, and during this experience I got a chance, I was crazy, really crazy, nice and super proactive. I also became a local committee vice president of outgoing global internship program. For sure, you don't know this name. Hope that it's still OGT. I'm not sure. Aga, yeah. you can tell me. Yeah, For, now, yes. For now, okay. yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, so good. So, so yeah, I was uh, LCVP OGT in Lublin and it was a very important part of my ISEC journey because for the first time I saw the power of vision. And as EB 1516, uh, so long time ago, our, sta our statement for Lublin was time for action. And we were looking for this kind of attitude, action-oriented attitude in young people in Lublin, because we believed that Lublin needed uh, this in that time. And as I told you, I was crazy. So after this experience, I applied for local committee, local committee president, LCP of Isaac in Lublin. My LC was crazy uh, because I was LCP after, after GA, I got trust. So, uh, I decided to apply for this position because I really wanted to contribute more to, to Isaac Vision. P 
peace and fulfillment of human sky potential it's still super super nice to to remember it and to and it's super cool to to hear it and i'm super proud that i still have these words in my head and in my mind in my mind so during this experience i think that i met the most amazing people in my life my eb it was totally amazing adventure with them for me they were example of people who can believe in power of youth and in power of our team and i think that day by day we were striving for for leadership attitudes in uh, in youth and what is more we create a super amazing vision of lc not for executive board so it was something new in lublin and i was proud uh, that we did it so i do know that this experience will be for forever really forever in my heart and why because in 16 17 thermas when i was LCP, we proved that in Lublin, in my lovely city, uh, we had the flame uh, and we were ready for wonderful changes. And after this ex experience, I was LC coach. Uh, I had pleasure to work with LC Toru in Bialystok Be for six months. After this, I decided that I really love Isaac. I really want to go contribute more and what I can do. I can apply for MC. So I did it. I decided to write and send my application because it's not connected. Connected. Sometimes you are writing, but you are not sending. So I wrote and then I sent my application because I strongly believe in power in youth. And I was totally sure that we can be unstoppable. Uh, why unstoppable? It was part of Okra's strategy for, for next term and she was elected MCP. I still remember my call with, with Okra. As I told you, she was my MCP. She told me that I will be MCVP BD in her team. And I think that it was one of the best day in my ISEC journey. And during our term, during MC Now term, I had pleasure to work with amazing people, with Carol and Kasper. They were my friends for, from LCP commission. They were part of BD Corner in our term. And we decided that we will be unstoppable and we will do crazy things. And I hope, hope that we did. And we did it because we worked with the best, sorry, but they were the best commissions in ISEC. Kisses for, for, for Bambri and bad people. And I think that we proved that we can do everything if we have enough courage to fight for it. And some of you maybe know I applied for MCP. And it's a funny story because one day before this official General Assembly on NATCO, it was, I think, two years, yeah, two years ago, NATCO 2018, I decided that it wasn't a good decision. And I resigned one day before, before election. And I think that it was a really good decision. And I'm proud that I can support right now uh, organization from, from on site. And I hope that I am doing it. Yeah, so, so that's my story. I hope that you are still with us. If not, uh, please come back. Okay, thank you, Kitty. I also like, I went back in time a little bit because when, when Kitty was in MC, I was starting my, my leadership experience because I was doing career days when, when Kitty was responsible for business development. And this is actually the moment that we met. I yeah, remember like, <laughs> I remember very, very well th that times because it was for me the first moment when I saw like power of myself and myself inside of Isaac. Yeah, you are a totally amazing team leader. I still remember our first uh, visit in Poznań with Karol and to show us um, this MTP, I think uh, is the name of yeah, uh, the venue. Place where, yeah, it was a really cool, a cool time and I still have this in my mind. Yeah, but we have all of those positive and uh, amazing stories to share and sometimes our member can feel like, okay, like Isaac is so amazing and like we, we are so you know filled with vision all the time filled with leadership all the time but there are also those moments that are not so fine and happy and shiny and i wanted to ask you about those moments like what were what were the moments that were mo the most challenging for you during your isaac experience okay i really like this question hmm. i think that my whole isaac journey was a challenging experience and i think that it should be like this because if it is challenging, this experience can teach and develop us as a person and, and as a leader. So, of course, it's amazing when, as you said, when everything is going well. But I think that in hard times, we can see how we are using our values in real life and which kind of person, which kind of leader we really are. So talking about situation, I remember my, my first day as team leader or maybe even better as uh, LCVP. OGT, uh, in that time OGIP. I still love this uh, crazy names from, from, from history of Isaac. So, and I remember this question in my head, okay, Kiri, you are LCVP right now. What do you need to do? People are waiting for a really good strategy, for courage, 
for your courage, for your ambitious uh, actions. And they are waiting for you to, to know what we can do. And you don't know. So, so you are just sitting next to your computer and you still thinking how you can start. And you are right now as CVP of GT. So I asked myself what I can do and how it's even possible that somebody crazy selected me for this position. So I'm talking about this because when I got information that I will be LCVP OGT in Isaac Lublin, I really knew nothing about this area. I knew that is one of the opportunities that Isaac is giving to young people. And I was shocked because my whole Isaac journey was connected with sales and with external relations and with this business development stuff. So I was sure that I will be LCVP BD. And then I opened an envelope and I saw, okay, for next year you will be LCVP OGT. So I will be in front office. Oh my God. So I had two options in that time, give up or, or do something. And I realized that being leader doesn't mean that you need to know everything, but it means that uh, you need to do everything to know how you can deal with challenges. So this is my first challenging story. And another one is connected with my term in MC. And um, as it was said, I was uh, MCVP BD and I was super happy that I have this position. And uh, in the same time, I was super scared. I was only in that time, uh, 24 years old. And I was responsible for a common aging organization on a country level, and developing partnership with corporate sector. And I remember that before my first meeting with, L with MCVP BD current, uh, from MC now term, Kasper Fikor. I remember our first meeting with our national partner and I remember that I wrote a few facts about me in my notebook because I was sure that I would forgot my name in first uh, second during this meeting. I really had something like this, that my name is Katarzyna Kirechuk, that I like this, that uh, last book uh, I wrote, I read about this. This is my favorite color. It was something like this. And I realized in that time that every prob problem starts in our head, in my head. So, uh, so I need and I think that all of us need to take care of how we are thinking at what we are thinking. And, and as I said in the beginning of this question, I think that I'm super glad that my Isaac journey was challenging. And I will say it one more time that I think it should, it should be like this to teach us and develop us as a person, as a leader. Yes, because like even in our vision, there is written that we are developing leadership for these challenging experiences. And it doesn't mean that we are only challenging our volunteers and interns, but we are also challenging ourselves. So this is really like a crucial thing. Yeah, I remember one cool sentence from one Isaac conferences uh, that you can't change other people's life if you can't change your life. So we always need to start with ourselves to be, to be true leaders. And basing on all of this that, that you said, it, it shows us that it takes a lot of power from us to, to simply commit in, in what we are doing in ISEC. But sometimes on the other hand, it may seem for, for like new members and beginners in the organization that it's like, okay, like for what, for what sake I, I need to, you know, commit this amount of time, this amount of years even in this organization, what it can give me back. And this is another question that I wanted to ask you, like, because from your perspective, which is external right now, you can tell us mm -hmm. what Isaac experience gave you after all of these years and why it was worth it to commit because you, you were in the organization around four years or even yeah. more, four, four years. So why it was worth to uh, commit four years for the organization like, like Isaac? First of all, I learned something new that that there is something like comfort zone. And thanks to Isaac, I know that we need to leave our comfort zone as soon as it, as it is possible. And of course, I didn't join Isaac because I heard something about the vision or I heard something about our impact. I joined Isaac because I heard that I can learn something, something cool there. I heard about uh, English skills. I heard about career days. I heard that that Isaac is like the best platform for, for young person to develop. And for me, this question is connected with leadership. I remember first time when I thought about me as a leader, and it was when I was applying for local committee president position. So it was two years after Isaac. And I remember this feeling when I felt uh, what Isaac gave me, how much I changed 
how open-minded I am right now, how I'm looking for solutions, not for problems, and how, how brave I became, thanks to Isaac. And I think that after these four, four years, the most amazing thing which, which happened for me in Isaac is this feeling that I can be myself and, and I'm cool and uh, I can do really amazing things. And I'm uh, the simple girl from, from, from small village and I can do, I don't know, events for 1000 people or a few events like career days in whole Poland. So it was totally amazing and totally, totally cool experience to, to enjoy every second in this organization. And if I'm thinking about me before Isaac, me in, in Isaac and me after Isaac, I don't know uh, where I will be uh, right now uh, before this experience, because I think that, that this, expe this experience gave me everything. A lot of skills, a lot of cool moments, a lot of inspiring moments, a lot of amazing people and, and friendships. And in the end, uh, thanks to Isaac, I know that I can be more and do more in every situation and that everything is impossible until it is done. Yeah. Yeah, like I also had this kind of moments in my Isaac journey that w in which I discovered that there are a lot of things that I learned and I can list them down, but the most important thing that I gain is this inside power that I have in myself. And mm -hmm. like I, I cannot even name other place that I was before Isaac uh, in which like gave me this possibility to explore myself and giving, you know, the freedom of being myself simply. Mm -hmm. yeah. I will share with you one super funny story because I study journalists with Gruszczyk and Diana. Fun fact is that they were part of my EB, but they joined ISEC for me. And so in the end, I was, uh, <laughs> I was um, LCP for them. So I remember Gruszczyk and Diana from Lublin uh, after first ISEC conference. And they were totally in love with this organization. And I didn't share their enthusiasm at the first moment. So with friends who were not part of Isaac, uh, we were saying, oh my God, we are so lucky that we are not part of this organization and that we have time for other things. Like, like we can chill, we can read books, we can do whatever uh, we want. And now I know how stupid it was, but still I'm proud that they have um, <laughs> such a cool story connected with me and Isaac. And after a few months, I saw that Gruszczyk and Diana had changed a lot and they are really enjoying being in Isaac. I talked with them about this and I applied in next recruitment after this one conversation about what Isaac is giving to them in that time. So when I went for the first inter interview in Isaac, I already knew everything about Isaac, program body, global host. I even know what was the difference between IGV, OGV and IGT. I was so smart and so well prepared by Gruszczyk and Diana for this, but mm -hmm. as I told you before, I need to be honest, I I did it for myself because I, learned, I heard that Isaac is an amazing platform to, to find yourself, to find your values, to find your skills, to check if you can be the leader for other, for other people. So, so it was amazing. So it was amazing experience to, first of all, seeing them really enjoying Isaac, hating Isaac, and then, joined, and then I joined Isaac and I became even LCP for, the, for those people. So I think that this story is also showing that you can spend a lot of time in Isaac, but, but this time is totally worth it to spend uh, in this organization because you will be a better person after this and you will rethink your life, your values, and you will learn a lot. During all of those conversations that I am having and I, I will have with my guests, we cannot pass to the normal without talking about our current context because mm -hmm. like even though we say that Isaac is so powerful that it gave us a lot and that like seeing this impact that we can do this friendship that we can make those connections that we are we are having it made us stay but right now our members are not having like the same type of experience that we are talking about and my question to you right now is, from your perspective, like totally external, why do you think ISEC is relevant right now? Okay, so I think that in times of Corona or any different, because uh, I know that we are talking about this situation, or any different times, uh, we can see which kind of leaders we really are in ISEC. And right now we can see in which part of management or even in crisis management, we are really good as organization and where we need support. And I think that it's totally okay to ask for, for help if it's needed. 
So we all know the story of Isaac and I hope that we all can imagine how hard it was for the founders of Isaac uh, to be Isaacers in that time. And in my opinion, this is our time to prove that we deeply understand value of exchanges and the value of life-changing experiences, which are we delivering. And for me, this time we can use our knowledge, our passion, our determination to show the world what does it mean to be ISECR. And by world, I mean to show also our members that being in ISEC is connected with this. And being in ISEC is connected with this kind of leadership in hard times. So I think that we don't know how Corona or COVID-19 will change our reality. Uh, but for sure, our world will be, will be different. So I think that we can't just sit and wait for, for old and these normal times, as we used to call it, times before Corona. So we will not come back to reality before, before COVID. I think that we need to use every second to, to prepare Isaac for new reality. And, and still, we can be the change that we want to see in this world right now with our members. It's not only MC responsibility, it's not only LCP responsibility uh, to be the change in the hard times. I think that everything is starting by simple actions and members, team leaders, coordinators, everybody can do something for Isaac. And I think that if we, if I'm saying that everybody can do something for Isaac, I think that during this Corona time, connection between Isaac and alumni is even more important than, than ever because we can support each other. We can, as you said, I have external uh, perspective. I have right now also external knowledge about, about business, about employer branding, about stuff like this. So, so we can share our knowledge and we can share our experience together. And for sure, after this kind of brainstorming, we will see many options, what we can do as an organization now and after COVID. So I think that it starts with every single member of ISEC. And I'm saying we... It's our organization, what we can do, because I'm, I think that, that this connection between ISEC and alumni is super important right now. And we can do, maybe we can create new product. Maybe we can redefine our product. Maybe we can do career days online. There is a lot of possibilities what we can do and how we can engage members. Yeah, so I think that it's only time for, time for action. And uh, if we will do it, we will create new reality and we will be not waiting. So I have in my head right now one sentence that the best way to predict the future is to create it. And I wish that Isaac will create and we will be not waiting for new normal times. I totally agree with you. And this is really powerful what you said, that we can still count on you and count on this, this alumni society that we have behind us. And to, to end this conversation, I, I simply wanted to, to emphasize to, to our listeners that Guys, as Kitty said, now is the time to stop and to rethink what our organization means to us and what contribution we can give personally. So if you have any, even the totally random idea of what we can do as an organization right now, you can put it in the comments below. You can text me or you can text Kitty and you can let us know what ideas do you have and what like invention do you have in your mind? Because like, Right now, you are the most powerful element of our organization as members. Mm -hmm. I think that we should remember that uh, every fire starts with spark. And I think that we have a lot of sparks in our organization right now. So it will be amazing to see your comments and your ideas, what, and, uh, what Isaac can do and how Isaac can, can deal with this hard time. And as you know, I am part of, of, of a huge company right now. And we are, we are also thinking and we are also having brainstorming with alumni of our organization or even with different uh, departments, what we can do as employer branding agency to help our clients, to help other organizations fight with Corona. So I think that everybody is thinking about this and it will be totally cool to have this brainstorming and just think together what we can do as Isaac. Because as one amazing hashtag says, once Isaacers always and <laughs> Isaacers. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Kitty, for, for your time and for all of these amazing stories that you shared with us. I hope to see you physically, let's hope, in yeah. the next conference uh, so, so we can meet yeah. together. Yeah, thank you, Aga. First of all, really, I would love to, to thank you, Aga, for this conversation. It was pure pleasure for me and I'm, I'm really happy that, that, uh, that you gave me this chance to share my, my leadership story with you and with current members of, uh, of the best organization ever.
called Isaac. If I can help you with anything, you can just uh, contact me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or whatever. I still have my Isaac email, so we can also write <laughs> there. And of course, I, I wish you best of luck during your MC term. I know that you will be on CVP marketing. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for you and also for every person who is creating Isaac now. You're amazing and I think that you all need to know that, that you are already changed that, that we need in this world. I just wish you to enjoy your experience. So don't be afraid to be yourself. And really, I wish you courage to be more and do more. I hope that you are still with us and you will uh, like this, this podcast as, as we do. Thank you very much, guys. And hear you next week. Yeah, bye-bye. Thank you.